you can make any plot that you want interactive by using the ggref package. This allows you to add proper animations, tool tips, or even on click events. Let me show you how that works. First, we need to look at the code of our static GG plot. The code for this is a bit long, but don't worry about it. We don't have to look at all of it. The only thing that we need to do is to load the ggref package, and then we just have to figure out what we want to make interactive. For example, if we want to show the mean life expectancy with a tooltip, if we hover over a point, we need to modify the GM point layer. And the modifications are pretty straightforward. For each GG plot layer, ggref gives you an interactive version by simply appending underscore interactive to it and then what you need to do to make this interactive is to add one more aesthetic to that specific layer so that's why we make some room for another aesthetic and then since we want to work on the tooltip we add the tooltip aesthetic and map it to the mean life expectancy column that is inside of our data set which is also the same variable that is mapped to the y coordinate and once you run this code nothing will happen you will just get the same plot back that's because it isn't rendered as interactive yet but it already knows all the information so that is why you save your plot into a new variable that you can use inside the gref function to render it to make it truly interactive so as i said we use the gref function to render the code to being interactive and then we pass our new variable into this function but one thing you have to watch out for is that this code right now wouldn't work because the first argument of the gref function isn't a gg object but plain code and not a variable. So make sure that you specify that you actually want to pass your variable to the GG object argument. Otherwise you will just get an empty plot and wonder what's going on. Happened to me a lot of times. So just make sure that you put this in there and then you can also specify the width of the corresponding plot. And now if you execute this, you will truly get an interactive plot where if you hover over a point, you will get something, well, not really nice, but you will at least get something. The numbers don't look great, so maybe we should put in some effort to format this. For starters, we could modify our data set that we passed to ggplot by computing a new column, which we call tooltip label. And there we can use the glue function to wrap the number that we want to display into an actual text. And also notice that I have used some rounding there to make the number look nicer. And then all that is left to do is to use this new label inside of our tooltip. And once you re-render this, you will have a nicely formatted text label. But I wouldn't be me if I didn't customize this further. And we can do all of this by using the options argument, which needs a list of stuff that you want to change. And ggref gives us a couple of helper functions to work on specific things like the tooltip. And inside of these helper functions, there's usually a CSS argument in which we can put in some CSS code to modify the style of the tooltip. For example, we could make the background white and add a black border around the tooltip. This will give you a label that doesn't have a black background, but a white background, and it looks like this. This still doesn't look great, so we might want to throw in more CSS keywords in there, but really, if we put all of this into text, this will be tedious. So this is why we replace our CSS text using the CSS function from HTML tools. And then we can just list our keywords as if we are working with a named vector. So our previous code translates to background is equal white and border is equal to the text we had earlier. And now this is in a tidier fashion so we can add more keywords like adding some padding around the label, making sure that it's bold and changing the font size to some number. And now our label looks a little bit nicer. Of course, there's lots more you can do here, but let's just move on to more stuff with ggref. We don't only want to have a tooltip as we hover over a point, maybe we want to highlight all the points that correspond to a given continent. And the way to do that is to go to your interactive layer, and in there you just have to specify the data ID argument and map it to the stuff that is supposed to react when you hover over the point. And that way you get an activation when you hover over points, but not if you hover over the line. That's maybe not that great, so we should probably also make the line interactive. Hopefully by now you know that all the stuff that we need to do to make this interactive is to replace the original GM layer by the interactive one, and then we need to map the data ID to the same thing as in the point layer. And then everything works smoothly and if you hover over the line or the point, it doesn't matter, the hover animation will activate. Alright cool, now, now let's style the hover animation as well. Right now when I hover over something that particular line turns orange and all the other lines stay the same. That's not really what I like to do here. I want to keep the original color but gray out everything else or at least make the colors less opaque. And the way to change that is to go inside of our list of options that we use in the gref call and in there we can use the ops hover function 
to pass in some CSS and in this case I just reset the CSS to nothing which means that we won't get any hover effect at all. So right now if I hover over a line nothing happens which is good because I didn't want to have it turn orange all the time. And now to get my desired effect I need to add one more step to our list of options which is to modify the inverted hover effect which means everything that is not currently hovered and in there we just specify via CSS that the opacity of those lines should be reduced. And now everything looks nice. If I hover over a line, only that line gets highlighted and all the other ones fade away. You can still see them a bit, but the main focus is on the hovered line now. And the tooltip is also still working. If I go over a point, I will also see the tooltip. That's pretty cool, but there's one thing that is bothering me with the transparent lines. Behind the points, you can kind of see that the lines go through the points. This is just a regular kind of stuff that happens when you put layers on top of each other and usually you don't see it, but here we do because we activated transparency and now we can also see underlying layers like the lines behind the points. This isn't that pretty, so I'd like to change that. Here, one way to deal with that to make it at least a little bit better is to make sure that the opacity for the points reduces less than for the lines. For scenarios like these where we want to modify the CSS code depending on the geometries, ggref has a nice helper function for us. So we can just remove the CSS that we've written so far and instead use the gref CSS function to modify the CSS code. In here we first give general CSS. This means I set everything to an opacity of 0.4 first, but then I override the line CSS code and here I just use the same code opacity and set it to some lower number. And now when I hover over something I cannot see the lines behind the points that well anymore which is what I was going for and now the points are kind of very visible but that's just a trade-off. You can figure out for yourself what you want to do in these kind of scenarios. But the point is you can use gref CSS to modify the CSS code depending on the geometry that is modified. Finally let me show you one more cool trick where you combine ggref and patchwork. This requires that we have another interactive plot that we want to use in combination with this plot here. So let's just create one more plot using the same data. And in there we make sure that the data ID argument is the exact same thing that we used in our first plot. You will have to watch out for factor variables here. Sometimes you need to make sure that your factor variable is transformed to a character using the as character function. But the point is the data ID is supposed to share the same stuff that we used in the first plot. But once we've set that up inside of our gref call, we can modify the gg object that we passed to it by putting a patchwork in there, which means that we assemble our plot and then we probably want to get rid of all the legends in the plot. So we just apply legend position is none to each part of the patchwork. And of course, for this to work, it actually is required that we have the patchwork package loaded. And now if we run all of this, we get a nice patchwork where the interactivity reacts to the same thing. Which means if I hover on one thing of one of those charts, I immediately get the reaction on the other chart too. That was our final trick for today. I hope that you have enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to hit that like button. And if you want to see more of my stuff, maybe check out this video next where I take a deep dive into patchwork that powered this last trick. Thank you for watching and I will see you next time.